Scotty Scheffler. Yeah. yeah, I'm taking the chalk. The guy, it's just one of those things. Like you feel like a guy who has won at Augusta can win every mm-hmm. time at Augusta. So like he's sure. he's proven he can do that. And uh-huh. I mean, he just it's just one of those things where like I don't feel like anybody else can beat him right now. He just has to have something's got to go wrong in his game. So if he goes out there yeah, and plays good himself. golf yeah. right now, yeah, yeah. it's Scheff- It's his to lose. It's not going to be Scheffler. He's not going to win it, and here's why. What is up, everybody? How you living? No puts given. Tony, Chris, Golf Spy T, Golf Spy C. Before we get started, hit that subscribe button. Okay, I gave you a minute to do that, and now you're good. Tony, what's going down? I got all the things here. Look at you. You are like... I uh, I did not get the memo. I guess I guess I probably shouldn't need a memo, but like you are you are head to toe. Who makes the glove? That's always the key. Like, okay, what's your guess? Do you have a guess? Um, I don't. Oh, oh, look at that, Callaway. Mm-hmm. Little Callaway limited edition. So okay, in in uh, addition to a new gold standard, we have a new green standard. Look at yeah, look a little ball marker on there. It's oh, a man. little shamrock. So. You know, right. I don't know, but the well, green that's, is... That's fun, maybe. Uh, Look at that. I'm going to wear this this week a bunch. I'm not, I may just wear it all day. I just may wear it throughout just the Just walk house. around town, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? Tour stuff. We got tour stuff to talk about. Masters gear. It's Masters week, people. We got yeah, to talk about the Masters things. People got fired up last week, Tony, about... This laying up on a par five yardage thing. People ask questions. You did a little more digging. We'll get to that. Masters, sorry, not Masters, but April Wedge Challenge. We'll go through that again. One more time, just in case you missed it last week. I got a question for people. I want to know how much you're going to spend on something. That's the teaser. So stick around. We're not going to, I'm not going to tell you everything right now. So... Because I made this mistake last week, I'm not going to make it this week. Is Nelly Korda picking the worst time to be the best player in the world? I mean, she's I the best player so. on any tour in the world right now, bar none. Yeah, I mean, she four is. in a row, and then to go to do it again in match play, right? That's kind of a little bit of a different animal. Sure it is. <laughs> sort of different rules, same result. Yeah, pound pound for pound. Definitely giving Scotty Scheffler a run right now as as the best golfer on the planet, but I mean, let's let's go for wrap up four just before Masters Week in the same week as the women's NCAA, which was just off the charts in in terms of viewership and engagement to the point where mm-hmm. I would be willing to bet that the Masters doesn't beat it. I think that's kind of you know, Ooh. yeah. That there you go, bold prediction. Ooh, Ooh that's yeah, bold. send on that. Yeah, bold the uh, prediction. Excuse the, yeah, I mean you got excuse the noises Caitlin in the background here. There's some Angel Reese, <laughs> South Carolina, etc. Great couple weeks for women's sports, but I feel like Nelly isn't getting her due. Just giving the time, four wins in a row. Again, I'm saying she's the best player on any tour in the world right now. Get her. Her. Let's get her a Masters invite. I mean, I know it's let's late, get her a ma- somebody, I'd rather see her in the out. Masters and Joaquin Neiman. <laughs> that's there's your hot take oh hot boy take of the day, but <laughs> oh boy nelly nelly way to go keep it up maybe when you get to six or seven in a row you have the spotlight all to yourself here late april early may akshay batia one playoff did you see what denny mccarthy did i, I oh, heard just it, the most spectacular and brutal I mean, it was golf in that nine holes plus the one playoff hole was the absolute epitome of the brilliance, the exceptional ability, and the heartache of professional golf. Eight birdies. He makes eight birdies on the back. I think he was six back at the turn. And then ties it up. And then what happened? And then what happened? And then? And then? First playoff hole. He misses his drive a little right. He was going to have to lay up anyway. It's a long hole. It's like 607 yards or whatever uphill. He wasn't going to get there in two anyway. Lays up, has you know an 80-yard shot or or whatever the case is. 
He went straight Ben and Jerry's on his third shot, man. Chunky monkey. Straight up. Perfect been lie. There. I mean, you been give there. It, I mean, not to win I mean, a PGA Tour event, but I've been there. I've done that. You got to think. I mean, I'm not saying any shot is easy to win. that, But, like, for a professional golfer, you know. I mean, that's an open. I mean, that's a fast break dunk that you just. Off the rim. Mm. Yeah. Chunks it in the water, opens and the door. Batia wins. Second, the mass. I mean, yep. Second PJ Tour victory for the Akshay, and then he gets the golden ticket. Right, goes to the Masters this week. That win qualified him for the Masters. He was not in otherwise, but we were kind of looking at his bag a little bit because there's a couple interesting nuggets. <laughs> oh in what did you? Oh what my. did you? What's your I mean, first of all, part? first yeah. of all, find something in your life, and this is this is outside of golf, people. This is this is life advice here. I'm giving you, find okay. something in your life that you love, as much as Akshay loves lead tape. Because <laughs> this is absolutely <laughs> astounding. I mean, lead tape on the putter, lead tape on his driver, lead mm-hmm. tape on all three of his wedges. I don't I don't know if you know. Callaway is just like no, you know we're not gonna we're not gonna swing weight for you DIY, whatever. But it is absolutely mm-hmm. amazing. Um, just again, mm-hmm. volume of lead tape, um, and, and I do I wonder because the guy the guy's got the build of a of a kite basically. If his t shirt was a, or his polo is a little big, he's gonna catch some air. And well, yeah, if he I, stood, I, behind I, I hope the bottom up. of his shoes are lead taped. That's <laughs> what I'm getting at. I'm saying if he stood behind his his long putter. Might not be able to see him. Oh my God! But hey, <laughs> pounds it off to the Masters. Pounds but yeah, this it. is this is crazy. So you kind of look at all right. So he's got the he's got the big ass jailbird on a on a long stick putter, which just seems mm-hmm. like okay, we've mm-hmm. kind of seen that before. That that's kind of a hot item. But then you you look at his driver. He's got a Rogue ST Max LS, which is now two generations old. He's got a huge huge chunk of lead tape covering the kind of the mm-hmm. carbon fiber on the on the toe and, a, and another mm-hmm. sizable su- chunk of carbon I mean, so uh, much they had to put it in the specs of how much lead tapes on there it's, right like how, <laughs> the weighting i mean he's got like 12 almost 11 over 11 grams of lead tape total on this thing absolutely amazing. which is a lot and, that's a lot yeah. people under 45 inches that's another thing built length under 45 inches which is mm-hmm. which is crazy because you look at the way he's built and you know i guess that Maybe makes him look a little taller than he is, but it doesn't look like, you know, <laughs> 44 and 7 eighths inches would be enough length to actually get him to the ball. Um, I know. But, but here we go. Yeah, so mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. we've got the Rogue ST. So we're two generations old in the driver. Ro- uh, excuse me. Paradigm AI Smoke Max Fairway Wood. So not the Triple Diamond. He's going to the Max there. Mm-hmm. He's got a U- X-Forge Utility. So sticking yep. with the Callaway theme, Apex yep. irons that that look anything but new, and then we go to the the Jaws Raw Wedge collection, and again, just like let's yep. let's just cover the whole toe in lead just tape because slap all the lead tape on there. You all can. the lead tape in the world. So that's uh, I wonder know, if he purposely has his wedges made, you know, like four or five swing white points light, so that he can just slap a bunch of lead tape on there. Otherwise, those things are going to weigh like E four. You know, and he's got you know an Apex U- UW a prototype version, I guess, but Apex UW in kind of that transition spot that we talk about all the time. Seventeen point mm-hmm. eight degrees. Seems like there's a lot of specificity in in tour equipment these days. So when you're uh, that good, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's pretty much mm-hmm. a full Callaway bag, which makes sense uh, and also notable. I think uh, probably get a text message if I don't uh, text message you if will. I neglect Somebody? to mention this, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the first PGA Tour win that I'm aware of. Anyway, there, you know, some possibly prototype type stuff towards the end of last year, but the official yeah. no, 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 the real the deal. First pro PGA Tour victory for the Chrome Tour golf ball, setting the new gold standard this week. Anyway, <laughs> there you go, there you go. To a recap, I. A question people can comment on this if you would like. I'm wondering if the long putter thing, if this is going to become more of a 
trend. And I get it. I get it. You look out there, you go, okay, well, there's not that many. That's why I'm asking the question is, are we going to continue to see more and more of these things from, from people that don't just, you know, have horrific yips like the Lucas Glover situation? You know, but finding something that's comfortable. Will Zalatoris, Adam Scott, Ben on. Um, right? Now you gotta throw uh Akshay in there and others. If we see more and more of these guys going to a long putter, is this the next trend in the putting space? You tell me what you think. Master's gear, Tony. Yeah, we have got a full post. I got the memo. I've... We'll have you to did not get the yeah, memo. I did not. Nick can throw this in here. So we've got kind of a rundown that includes some. Do you have it up? Let's go down. Let's go. Just go yeah, yeah, item five. Go, let's go down. So let's bring it up. Article: Best Masters themed apparel, gear, and accessories. Yeah, I mean, and there's still there's still stuff trickling in. So the tailor made stuff. We'll we'll touch on that a little bit. Didn't make oh, yeah. it in here. Um, yep. But yeah. So it's interesting because this time every year we see a ton of this Masters theme gear. Um, Nobody's allowed to say masters. You always see that. That's part of the fun is, is how you, how you navigate that season opener, first major April edition. Azalea. Um, Spring break, Georgia. Oh, the Bridgestone. Mm, I like that. Hat. So, okay. yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, there we go. A little tin that I forced my daughter to do an unboxing video. If you want oh, nice. to see the complete and total indifference of a teenager, check out my Twitter feed from last <laughs> Friday. Um, anyway. <laughs> So yeah, like I, it's interesting because everybody's trying to do this. Some guys do it really well, and you come up with cool stuff. And other times, I just feel like, oh yeah, let's let's just put a little green and yellow on it, make it look like mm -hmm. you right now, for example, and call it a day. So let's go down. Let's go down the list. I am my own. Everything. I am my own theme. All right, uh, I like this one. True Link Swear. Uh, we got a slide with. They did a kind of a cool little thing here with some latitude and longitude. Again, yeah. all these are going to feature the the yellow, the green, the colors. But I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm not I'm not a slide guy, but you know, it's Should not be. over the top. It's not like it's not completely lazy. Put a green stripe, yellow on it. Um, if you're yeah. looking for, a I slide, like the latitude but... and longitude. That shows yeah. effort. I'm good with it. Okay, next one. Roback Azalea. Like you said, how do you get around getting a nasty legal letter from? The people in Augusta, Georgia, from the Masters, you cannot say, you know, direct those things. So you use fun phrases like Azalea. Masters, you can't, regu Azalea. you can't regulate cheese sandwiches. Yeah, I mean, that, eh. It's fine. Just, eh. Fine. Yeah, I don't, it's fine. I, I saw some, I don't even remember what it was. I saw something else from Roback last week popped up on my Twitter feed. I was like, that looks really good. This You like it better? It. What about the Whoop? collection band yeah this is a eight. textbook example of what i'm talking about like, okay like it's a green band and we're next mailed yeah. it in yeah. mailed it in Not cool. uh cobra dark speed you mentioned season opener like the first major so that's one way companies will do this um i tend to think cobra does a great job on this stuff with their palm tree crew the arnold palmer stuff all their collections limited editions I think I think Cobra does a phenomenal job, but what do you think? Season opener driver. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is. I'll give I'll give Cobra credit for just banging away at this every year with kind of these these major themed drivers, and I, I believe there's at least one more coming this year. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is their best ever, but I do like the way they kind of did the the azaleas and and again the green and yellow we talk about, but it's not over the top with mm -hmm. the with the azaleas. Kind of kind of kept it in what you would expect from Dark Speed, right? Kind of kept the theme. So mm -hmm. I like that one. Yep. Under Armour, their flagship shoe gets a little green and yellow makeover. They're calling this the Patrons Pack. So again, at the Masters, uh... people don't attend. Well, the people that do attend, they're not fans. They're not you know individual. They are. Patrons. patrons come on all right patrons so under armor patrons pack to me this is just yeah kind of yeah it, it is textbook eh. example again right like okay eh. we need to take a product sure. we already have throw a little green and yellow on it call it a day hey you know palm uh has the lottery head cover again lottery paying on to it. something that i have not received in 20 years of but this is different right like how do you how do you find that uh how do you find that little angle that's a little bit different it hasn't been overcooked and they've got they've got the requisite stuff here, right? You got a little 
azalea you got a peach but also bringing the the lottery that nobody wins i i love yep. that one yep yeah great thinking this one you kind of have to do but it's easy and like eh, whatever it's the honorary starter grip golf pride again it's green it's yellow and they've been doing away. it again so i feel like they're kind of grandfathered in because they were among you'll the, see it next year when, yeah when this this whole trend started they were early yep. in so again like green and yellow grip waggle see this one i like this one waggle yep, has i do hat. too again just this again one, what's I that love... little different angle right and and what you see on the waggle hat you got the cup the red cup there but again you do not get to run at Augusta. if you go to the masters you will not run places you have a seat you sit you observe if you do, like a lot of times people will put their chair out and that is your spot. So they have the green, the yellow. I love that. And then the logo is the green and yellow chair. The like folding that. chair. That's solid. Yep. Waggle, solid. great job. I'm a fan. I like that one. New Balance 997. Yes, green. it's from the Under Armour school of Masters theming. Just Yep. Just for fun, Melon Odyssey Lynx Hydro Hat. Doesn't scream <laughs> Masters to me very much. It's just green no it's hey, like, yeah as we got a uh, you know it's a perfectly good hat just made it perfectly green. good yeah. hat speaking of perfectly good just made it green mm-hmm. lab df3 yeah, I mean, green uh, lab golf they have in the df3 which is fantastic putter but they introduced a green colorway which that's more of a timing thing for me than like a master specific thing yeah. like okay great i mean cool. they do have a lot of colors so no big deal um same thing, Same. kind of the mass, you know, Stitch has their SL2 fadeaway bag. That's green. Puma, Phantom so Cat. So I'm Nitro giving, Garden. of the shoes, of the shoes, I'm giving of the three. So we've seen three. This is the third one. Puma yep. wins. And again, they didn't do anything radically different. You look at it, hey, green and yellow on a white shoe. But this one, they actually went to the extra length of putting some azalea print and some cool stuff on the sole. Not that you actually see it. Uh but right, but it's a little show. bit effort, effort. So yeah, I'll uh, you know, if you're looking for which shoe won the Masters limited edition run, here, mm-hmm. here you go. There you go. That's fine. Pins and aces, pimento blade cover, love it. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for the pimento cheese stuff, even though it's kind of been done to death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Adidas hat Adidas. I'm okay with the groundskeeper angle. I like that. I know. Yeah, I like that. I like the groundskeeper angle on the Adidas hat and then duca uh duca del cosma nope. has a shoe out is, as well if you're has into a green soul hold on <sighs> yep there it is oh you have I it got, <laughs> i gotta wear them today too yeah so i just i got i, I forget that I'll, I'll bring them back but there's a the i did get a new pair of duca kind of a carol kind of blue carolina blue silhouette i really like them i was surprised i'm like i actually I, really know. like this shoe I, anyway. I do want to say something about these because in, in, in our previous testing, we have knocked Duca because they were not very comfortable. And I will absolutely say that was true. This is a newer version of some of the older shoes. This one's way more comfortable. Now, I am not going to say that I'm going to put this on and go run a marathon or you know hike the Appalachian Trail or something like that. It's still probably a I'm riding in a cart shoe. I'm not uh you know i have some other shoes that i'll use if i'm gonna walk 18 but if you want people to stop and say damn tony you got some fancy shoes on these look fancy and they, these they are fancy smell shoes. of fine italian leather i yeah no i uh i would concur i i have likened previous ones like wearing clogs <laughs> like him uh-huh. you just feel like they they wrap some leather around a, a wooden shoe but they yeah. they've from a comfort perspective improved dramatically Yep. Oh, yeah. So right. that kind of runs through all the stuff. There's got to be other things out there, though. I, I'm Taylor sure made Taylor made's got a full collection, but put me on the spot, Chris, on the golf ball thing. Let's let's well, talk about because, because, all right, right, two, Let's do it. Two questions. So, question number one, people out there, if you find cool masters stuff that you think we should include sometime or just out there, post it. Comment stuff on that it. the we dummies won't. missed. Yeah, stuff that dummies missed. By dummies, I mean were... Chris or Connor. I mean Connor. Connor really. Me, I didn't miss anything. I'm just, yeah. I'm just reporting. All right. Now, in the past, I mean, both TaylorMade and Callaway do a great job with some of these limited edition or kind of special edition golf ball releases. We got an early sneak peek. Who did it better for the first major? So I get, 
I get, I mean, Adam yells at me for not being definitive enough on this type yeah. of thing. So yeah. I'm going to be so definitive. I'm going to give you two answers. That's how definitive I'm going to be. In terms of the golf wow. ball itself, the print wow. pattern, Callaway wins the print pattern. Oop. The Callaway's Azaleas on their, uh, their, uh, I guess, what was it? Kind of the, what, what was Truvis now? What are they calling it? The, uh, the true track Azaleas. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's the better pattern. But in terms of packaging and boxes, and I will say this for what TaylorMade is doing across the board when they do these limited runs, it's not just, hey, here's a golf ball. They put a lot of thought into the packaging and really kind of mm-hmm. theming it to the extreme. And we talk about mm-hmm. things that haven't been done before, right? They didn't just put it on mm-hmm. a box with a flower or or gr- put it in a green box with a yellow font, call it Master's no. Edition. So they leaned into the peaches. So this is a TP5 ball with a picks pattern. But the thing is the box. They created this peach box and it actually has this this fuzzy texture. So it actually feels like a peach. And so if you're into, like if you want to play the ball is cool, but if you're into like collecting some of this limited edition stuff, the, yeah. the tailor-made season opener, I don't know what phrase, I can't remember. They are in fact using season opener. So I got that right. So TP5 <laughs> picks season opener. The box on this is, is really cool. So there yeah. you go. Next. I guess we should also tease this next week. This week, we may be giving away a set of... Ooh, you yeah. guys seen these out there? Of course you've seen them out there. The Mizuno Azalea Irons. Again, limited edition. I have the blue ones. A couple of years ago, they did these. Uh, the 2 yeah, two one in what? the blue. But these are... I whew. can't. I, I will not say that we're definitely doing it, but you should definitely be checking our social okay. media later on this week for sure oh, by the time this comes on like within a day or so mm-hmm. you need to be checking mm-hmm. this out because yeah all yeah, right those are two final hot. masters questions and we're going to move on number one will tiger woods make the cut no next no no no, no. he says no 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 i'm gonna no. say he does i'm all gonna right, say you're... he does he can walk the course twice then he falls apart he has wd i he's gonna make the cut Hundred bucks. I put it on DraftKings. I am really hoping that that turns out well. All right, last question: Who wins it? Who's the winner this year, Tony? Scotty Scheffler. Yeah. I mean, just I think so. so. You're just going straight chalk. Yeah, I'm taking the chalk. The guy. It's just one of those things. Like you feel like a guy who has won at Augusta can win every mm-hmm. time at Augusta. So like he's sure. he's proven he can do that. And mm-hmm. I mean, it just it's just one of those things where it, like. I don't feel like anybody else can beat him right now. He just has to have something's got to go wrong in his game. So if he goes out there and plays good himself, golf yeah. right now, yeah, yeah. it's Chef, it's his to lose. There you okay. go. Yeah, I, I think it's always fun. People have uh, if you follow different people out there, like you know, people that are first time winners, right? Or sorry, first time players. You know, if you take everybody that's playing, all right. If it's their first time playing the Masters, I'm going to take them out. If they're, you know not ranked high enough in a certain category strokes gained t to green etc okay take them out and you're kind of left with this bunch of players that statistically if speaking, they're not say, scotty hey. scheffler take them out right now that's <laughs> sorry. that's that's your take if it's not yeah. scotty scheffler take him yeah. out give me like scotty or the field remember that I used to everybody used to do that with tiger scotty or the I mean, field give me scotty. tiger give yeah me, give me scotty yeah, I think there's actually a, another bet on DraftKings where it's like the players or the field, and it, it, it's like you know, like Scheffler, Rom, and one other, and you get those three or the field. Yeah, and I, I would like, give me those. Yeah, I would. Take yes, that plus one eighty five, plus one eighty five. If, uh, if you want to do that, no, Rory, he doesn't get the Grand Slam this year. If you know, nope. Uh, it's, like it's, said, it's, gotta... it's not going to be Scheffler. He's not going to win it, and here's why. Somebody else is going to win it. (laughs) That's why. It is hard to argue with detailed analysis like that. (laughs) Somebody else is going to win. I just don't know who it's going to be. If it were a first-time player, I would give a little nod to Ludwig. Ludwig. Guy has everything that you need to win any tournament. There's no reason he couldn't other than the fact he Scotty Scotty Scheffler is in the field. Well, two things. Scotty Scheffler is in the field, and he does not have that level of experience. I don't think we're going to see, you know, the 
Freddy couples, you know, type of thing. The when we saw Tom Watson and Stuart Sink go right down to it. I know it was a Masters, it was the the, the British Open, but I don't know that we're going to see that type of a situation. We might see Charlie Hoffman leading somewhere during the first round because he always seems to do that. Shout out to the Green Glove uh, Brigade. But I want somebody who's a really, really good iron player. Short game creativity. Last I heard, the best iron player in the world isn't in the tournament, according to Greg Norman. So, Well, that's true. I thought, yeah. Well, if Nelly Cord is in the tournament, I'm mm. picking Nelly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I like the people out there that are saying Xander Shoffley. He's been right like there. That. One bad shot I away like from winning. That. So I like that pick. Maybe, but he's, it's, he's not Scotty Scheffler. So that's... But he's going to win. All right, okay. anyway, <laughs> moving on. Last week, we ruffled a bunch of feathers, which was, I guess, super, super fun. We're going to do more of this, but because you asked, some people had yeah. feedback, Tony. We're, again, we're talking a par five. Do I go for the green or do I lay up to a preferred distance? There were some people that said what? Well, I mean, you're always going to get the guys that, that say the data is wrong. And, you know, every everybody believes they're the exception to the rule. But right. we did get a comment because I also mentioned as an analogy, it's kind of like taking three wood off the tee, right? Like it, it makes sense to people, but in reality, it's a bad play. And so I've got, I've got lots of data. Hole. Yeah, right. And so I look at it and... Looking at, at just distance alone. So scratch golfers hitting three wood off the tee, give up 18 yards. Five handicap gives up 11 on average. 10 handicap could be kind of an anomaly in the data, but kind of following the trends, right? 26 yards. And that also could be the tipping point. Again, 15 handicappers. Now you're getting guys who aren't as proficient with the driver, miss hit a lot. They still give up 12 yards. Uh, 20 and 25 handicaps give up between six and seven, choosing three wood instead of driver. So you're giving yardage up to begin with. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we know this. But the interesting question, and I didn't have the answer, was like, well, what about what about penalty strokes, right? That idea of like, okay, maybe the three wood, I hit it because I, I don't hit it OB as much. So I was like, that's an interesting question. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Talk about like, the second right. shot, right? Going for the green. No, no, off the tee, off the tee. Oh, so this is, tee. yeah, we're talking off the tee. The idea mm -hmm. of like, oh, I'm going to hit three wood because it's the safer play. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I have no idea. Let's let's see what the data says. Mm -hmm. And so it w it was really interesting. So scratch, scratch handicap, five handicap, ten handicap, uh, no difference. So the the rate of penalties off the tee with three wood versus driver absolutely the same. Interestingly enough, for for 15 handicap, it is higher with the driver, but then you get into, um, by the time you get to a 25 handicap, it actually goes the other way where it's a little higher with, with the three wood. Um, but these are all, I say higher, by and large, yeah. they're within a couple percentage points of each other. Uh, mm -hmm. The other stat I looked at was how close to the fairway edge are you? And so oh, scratch handicap okay. golfers, actually a little closer with the fairway, makes sense because those guys are really good and can hit a fairway wood. Um, right. Five handicap, almost a push, and then once you get beyond that, it it kind of switches up. And from in most cases, um, you're you're going to be closer to the fairway edge with the driver. The exception being the highest handicap, 25 golfers, and again, uh, 25 handicap golfers. And again, I think that's likely because it is so hard for people to hit fairway woods. And if you're a Right. A bad golfer or mm -hmm. whatever however you want to describe a 25 handicap. That. I'm not I'm not trying to throw rocks here, but however you yeah. would describe that, that guy is gonna struggle typically mightily with a three wood. Yeah. So unless unless the objective is simply to take a little distance off something, mm -hmm. right? Not because, oh, I think it, it doesn't go as far offline. Unless yeah. the objective is to just hit it shorter, it doesn't make sense to take a three wood off the tee. And again, allow for hazards and shape of the hole and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But just kind of a rule of thumb. This comes from mm -hmm. Marty Jertson at Ping when we went through the product presentation for their yeah. for their co-pilot software. Mm -hmm. Basically like to, you know, if you're going to give up, what it what is it? It's one yard of accuracy two to one right basically three to one i thought so okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so you're unless unless you're gonna give up basically minimal 
long story short, it's not worth giving up six, seven, eight yards of distance to get a little bit closer. If it's any more than a few, yep. you don't want to do it. So yeah, so basically three, three, two to one, three to one, two and a half to one, whatever you want to call it, right? Depending on yeah. the skill of the golfer, somewhere in that range, if you're giving up more than three yards with your three wood as an accuracy play. And these numbers, they use it for driver fitting, but obviously you're just talking about a sure. club that I hit off the tee. Right. If you're right. going to give up more than three yards, you need to be getting way more than just a little bit of accuracy. Yeah, so bottom line, what we can say definitively when comparing driver to three wood is that your three wood will be shorter. What we can also say definitively is it probably will not be more accurate by any measure very marginal that yeah not so accurate toward. as to justify giving up the yards bingo that's exactly what i was trying to say well said tony yes and if you're a higher handicap player another thing i might do ditch your three wood you can't hit it anyway you need a five wood you know 17 18 19 degrees something that you can get up in the air and the other point i want to make here and we'll move on to the next topic is I get it, people. This is the pit of fire rule. There are a number of people that comment like, well, you know, <clears throat> there's a, a, a 200 yards. You know, anything over 200 yards, my ball goes into a lake. You're telling me I should hit three wood? No. no. Don't no. do dumb well, my shit. Fairway, my fairway pinches down to like a 12-yard gap, and then, you know, there's the – you know, on one side there's Niagara Falls, and then on the other side there's another pit of fire. And you're telling me to hit three wood into this narrow gap? No. We're saying in the vast majority of situations, when you're deciding between going for the green and laying up to a preferred yardage, assuming that there isn't anything more than typical rough or bunkers, there isn't you know, uh, there isn't like caverns or like you said, there isn't a pit of fire, a major water feature, you know, some type of tectonic plate shifting, opening up a portal <laughs> or something. A, a portal to hell, right? Unless there's yeah, a portal to right? hell. Right? Yeah. Like this isn't stranger things, right? So come on, people. Use some common sense. But part of that common sense is when in doubt, send it. Send it. All right. Wedge challenge. Tony, go this got yeah. buried a little last week because there are so many cool things going on. So touch week. it so again. Yeah. So real yeah. quick, we're oh. introducing this. We're going to call this the April No Putts Given Challenge. We want to see, again, based on something I saw on social media, given 100 tries, could you hole out from 65 yards, call it 60, anywhere in that range? Mm -hmm. And would you be willing to risk it if the prize was called a million bucks, but the penalty was you couldn't play golf for three years? So... That's kind of where this comes from. That's the background. So the challenge here is go out and try this if you can. I don't care if it's at your course, practice green, wherever you can set it up, simulator, whatever. I think what I say I was going to use number three at, at the, the boulders, boulders yeah. on, uh, mm -hmm. on, uh, on Foresight um, yep. to try it out. But yep. this is what we want to know. Tell us in the comments below, first of all, could you, given 100 tries, hole out 60, 65 yards, anywhere in that range, could 100. you do it? How confident are you could that you could do it? Try it if you can. And then secondarily, what is the least amount of money or the smallest prize you would be willing to wager on? Again, mm. put in mm. the comments. Let us know. We are going to pick winners and, and you know, from anybody who prizes. participates, Copious comments. Prizes. Yeah, yeah we'll uh, send prizes. some stuff out. So no putts given. April challenge. Give it a go. Love it. Last question. Going to go ahead and leave you with this comment on this one below. I threw this out on my Twitter the other day. And it got quite a response. I'm going to ask you guys as well. How much would you pay for a full bag fitting? We're going to make a couple assumptions. You have access to multiple brands. This is a top-end fitting type of institution, a very high-qualified fitter. They're using the best and the latest in technology, etc. So assume that it's pretty phenomenal, right, in terms of the access. Of, what would you pay? No clubs, no nothing. You're just getting the info. You're paying for the fitting, getting the info. The what process. would you pay? Let us know. Comment below. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button too in case you haven't done that already. Golf by T, Golf by C. Happy Masters Week, everybody. We'll see you next time. We out.